blockchain examples, online voting, online identities, tracking items, and record keeping. So blockchain technologies are decentralized and distributed ledger systems where each block contains a list of transactions where once data is added, is cryptographically secured and linked to a previous block, creating a chain of immutable records. All right, so essentially every time a product that is using blockchain technology, okay, or a data set or some sort of a record keeping system, as it moves around a network, it creates a series of blocks that moves with the entire entity as it is exchanged amongst different users. All right, what we're gonna look at here is a variety of scenarios where this technology is used and the technology su supports the authenticity of whatever the product or element is that is being transactional or moved across the network. So the first one we'll take a look at is that of online voting. Blockchain enhances the security, transparency, and integrity of online voting systems. It ensures that votes cannot be altered because they're cryptographically written, okay, in a way that they can't be changed removed or tampered with after submission, providing trust in voting systems. Okay, so if online voting is happening, and obviously this would be happening online over a network such as the internet, this ensures that once a person has made their vote, their name is attached to it, it has who they're voting for and it's timestamped. Once submitted, it moves to the area where votes are gonna be tallied. It can't be changed in that transit. All right, so votes are made digitally and blockchain verifies and records them. As each vote is linked to a unique encrypted ID, it allows for a secure, anonymous and traceable voting process. Okay, so the vote goes through, it has an ID for whoever it was that made that vote. Okay, and obviously uh, all the records would have different names. All right, but it helps maintain the authenticity that that person made their vote digitally through whatever network to the centralized location where the votes are being tallied. The next one we'll take a look at is that of online identity. Users can manage and verify their identity across multiple platforms securely without repeatedly sharing sensitive information, allowing individuals to control their personal data without relying on centralized authorities. So you can have these like digital licenses or membership cards, all right, and they are stored on your system and then you can use those things to verify who you are when signing up for an online service or something relevant to whatever those members ships or cards are for. A person can verify their identity for online banking, e-commerce or government service without having to provide physical documentation every time. Okay, so I don't have to scan in all my documents to my system and then up, uh, through the application process have to upload them, submit them and do all that operation. If I link it to an existing online identity, that may streamline the authentication process for whatever online thing I am trying to sign up there for. All right, so I can establish these legitimized online uh, identities that are made up of my real uh, history and obviously a date of birth and whatever, th anything else I need to sign up for. So it could be my Medicare card as well. Anything that legitimizes who I am. Once I've done that once, okay, it will help me create this online identity that then I can use in other places, not needing to use any of these other types of physical media to upload to a platform. The third one is of tracking items of value. The tracking of goods, assets, and items of value throughout a supply chain. By providing an immutable record of every transaction, it ensures the authenticity, ownership, and a movement of items. So we can think of this as uh, tracking physical items and you know knowing their ID and whereabout they're moving. But also here we could be talking about things like uh, cryptocurrencies and how they are exchanged and how they are connected to specific users and their blockchain of previous transactions as well. So we could be talking about digital items as well. Blockchain can be used to track items of value across multiple trades, preventing counterfeiting by verifying its history, okay, from manufacturer, so from the beginning of when it was first made, okay, and between different customers. So as they sell this potential digital product, okay, it can still be traced back between which previous customers had it right up to once the manufacturer released it as well. So the manufacturer to the first customer would be one block in the chain. And then every time a customer is sold to another customer, that might create a new block in the chain as well. So we can track the history of the product back to when it was first made from the manufacturer. And then the final area is that of record keeping. Blockchain ensures that data cannot be altered or deleted once it's recorded. Remember, things are cryptographically written into a new block every time a transaction takes place or a series of transactions, pending whatever the element is. 
This makes it ideal for industries requiring long-term data retention and tamper-proof records. Okay, so they can build up this history of transactions, okay, that are locked in in history. And then as the actual data or element, okay, or entity or product is moved between systems or nodes of a network, that history moves with it as the blocks of the chain. In legal and medical fields, blockchain can be used for maintaining accurate, auditable records of legal contracts or medical histories, ensuring both privacy and data integrity. Okay, because yet yeah, the, the cryptographics ensures the security of the history of all the data within the blocks. Okay, but then the data integrity as well is the maintenance of that. The fact that the blocks are built up with the history over time of all the different changes that have been made and updating of the potential medical history or legal contracts. So it's all kind of locked into the blocks as well. All right, so that's how it supports record keeping. So I hope this video has given you a bit of an understanding of areas where blockchain can be used. And some of them, obviously, you might be familiar with already, but I hope for those areas that you weren't familiar with, this has given you a bit of an understanding. Essentially, with online voting, how it secures transmissions between a user making their votes with submission with a centralized uh, voting tallying system that'll be calculating the votes. With online identities, how people can make authentic online identities and then use those digital online identities to verify themselves in other locations. With tracking items of values, how the items can be exchanged amongst users and moved between nodes of a system and the blockchain follows and grows as users transact between each other. And then record keeping, okay, how data is secured and history is kept as it obviously moves around within the system through being written cryptographically and being immutable, that records can't be erased and giving authenticity about the history of whatever the record's about.